Welcome to Audit Archive, where we run you through some of the most questionable and rather atrocious police encounters. Today, we're looking at a case where an officer tried to run a man over during a traffic stop and then shamelessly lied to escape the consequences. It's safe to say that things caught up to the officer pretty quickly, and now he's paying the price. On November 23, 2021, Officer Matthew Knudsen of the Green Bay Police Department spotted a vehicle that failed to yield the right-of-way and almost caused an accident. As expected, Officer Knudsen immediately turned on his patrol vehicle's emergency lights and pursued the driver to initiate a traffic stop. Footage from the patrol vehicle's dash cam shows the driver entering the Imperial Pride neighborhood in Green Bay, Wisconsin, where he pulls into a driveway and immediately dashes out of the car to flee on foot. The driver was later identified as 47-year-old Robert Sanchez. As soon as Officer Knudsen realized that Mr. Sanchez was fleeing, he initially stepped out of the patrol vehicle to chase Mr. Sanchez down, but probably stopped in his steps and informed dispatch about the situation. The car! Courtney's running Male Hispanic, blue shirt. In response to this, other Green Bay police officers nearby were directed to the scene. The following body cam footage comes from one of the responding officers who located Mr. Sanchez walking around one of the neighborhood houses. The responding officer immediately pulled out her service pistol and followed Mr. Sanchez on foot while keeping him at gunpoint and ordering him to stop. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Despite this, Mr. Sanchez ignored all of her orders and continued to walk around the neighborhood. Amidst this, the responding officer is heard requesting dispatch to send more units to the scene. According to Tennessee v. Garner of 1985, under the U.S. Supreme Court, it was concluded that officers cannot resort to deadly force unless they have probable cause to believe that the suspect has committed a felony and poses a threat to the safety of the officers or a danger to the community if left at large. Taking this into account, at this very point of this incident, any deadly force used against Mr. Sanchez would be deemed unconstitutional and unlawful as he does not pose a direct or active threat to anyone. It's to be noted, however, that the responding officer was well within her rights to draw her firearm as this decision is generally made solely based upon the presented situation. In a blog post related to civil rights and police misconduct, it stated that, According to the New York Times, there are no rules regarding when an officer can draw his or her gun on a suspect. The general rule of thumb is that the officers can draw their guns using their own discretion. Essentially, it is up to each officer as to when to unholster their firearm and in what situations they would do so. It can be different for every person. Regardless, at that point, it was still unclear as to what Mr. Sanchez's motive was and why he was fleeing from the officers. The responding officer continued to follow Mr. Sanchez around the neighborhood for a few more minutes before deploying her taser at Mr. Sanchez when he stepped into a roadway. The taser, however, did not seem to affect Mr. Sanchez. Then, in response to this, Mr. Sanchez took off yet again and could be seen dashing across the roadway. According to the American Civil Liberties Union, the taser is a use of force and is to be used only when necessary to overcome resistance while effecting an arrest, preventing an escape, in self-defense, or in defense of another person from physical harm, and in accordance with the department's use of force policy. Taking this into account, one could argue whether the responding officer's use of non-lethal force was justified or not, since Mr. Sanchez was visibly not running or posing a threat at the time. Either way, it would be safe to say that the responding officer could have physically detained Mr. Sanchez instead of deploying her taser. Meanwhile, Officer Knudsen had driven his patrol vehicle to the responding officer's location and could be seen driving toward Mr. Sanchez. Footage recorded on Officer Knudsen's body cam and dash cam captured the moments right after Mr. Sanchez had run off into the neighborhood homes. It can be seen that Officer Knudsen chose not to pursue Mr. Sanchez and then hopped back into his patrol vehicle to drive a few blocks down in an attempt to intercept Mr. Sanchez. At this very point, Officer Knudsen spotted Mr. Sanchez and dangerously sped directly toward him while he was still running across the roadway after being tased by the second officer on the scene. The dash cam footage captured the incident when Officer Knudsen slammed on his brakes and slowed down just in time to prevent crashing into Mr. Sanchez. Then, one could expect that Officer Knudsen stepped out of his patrol vehicle to pursue and detain Mr. Sanchez. 
but what Officer Knutson did instead was simply horrible. Watch as Officer Knutson, despite having stopped his patrol vehicle, decided to continue driving and then subsequently crashed into Mr. Sanchez on purpose. Immediately after this, Officer Knutson jumped out of his patrol vehicle and pinned Mr. Sanchez to the ground while ordering him to place his hands behind his back. Put your arms behind your back. Amidst this, the second officer on the scene also joined Officer Knutson in detaining Mr. Sanchez and a third officer can be seen too. Now, it goes without saying that what Officer Knutson had done was severely unlawful. In fact, this ties back to when we discussed that any use of deadly force against Mr. Sanchez would be deemed unconstitutional since he simply did not give the officers any reason to believe that he was a threat to anyone. And even though it's pretty obvious that trying to run a subject over with a car falls under the use of deadly force, United States Armed Forces defines deadly force as force that is likely to cause or that a person knows or should know would create a substantial risk of causing death or serious bodily harm or injury. It's also stated that firearms, bladed weapons, explosives, and vehicles are among those weapons the use of which is considered deadly force. Referring back to Tennessee v. Garner of 1985, the Supreme Court held that the Fourth Amendment prohibits the use of deadly force against a nonviolent, unarmed felon who is fleeing. This simply proves that Officer Knutson had violated Mr. Sanchez's Fourth Amendment rights. Also, the Supreme Court noted that if the suspect is threatening the officer or there is probable cause to believe that the suspect committed a violent crime, deadly force may be justifiable to effect an arrest or prevent the suspect from fleeing. But once again, it goes without saying that Mr. Sanchez definitely did not fall under that category. Moments after, while pinned to the ground, Mr. Sanchez can be heard numerous times saying that he couldn't breathe. All officers on the scene completely ignored this and all Officer Knutson said to Mr. Sanchez was to catch his breath. I can't breathe. Reach in. In his jacket pocket. I can't breathe. What's your name? Robert Sanchez. Why'd you run? Then, to make matters worse, Officer Knutson claimed that Mr. Sanchez was not hurt and that he merely just pushed Mr. Sanchez, implying that it was nothing serious. You're not injured, okay? I pushed you to the ground. You're not injured. This was, of course, a blatant lie as the dashcam footage captured everything, and to imply that it was just a push would be far from what really happened. It appears as if Officer Knutson realized that what he had done was horrendous and therefore tried to cover things up. Over a month after this incident, the Green Bay Police Department released a statement that said that they were made aware by the Brown County District Attorney's Office on October 20th, 2022 of concerns surrounding actions taken by Officer Knutson while trying to stop Robert Sanchez. As a result of this, the Professional Standard Division, otherwise known as the PSD, began an inquiry into the encounter by reviewing the body cam and dash cam footage along with other related documents from the incident. It was then reported that the initial investigation showed that there were potential conflicts in Officer Knutson's police report, implying that Officer Knutson had possibly falsified the events from that evening. Two days after this, Officer Knutson was placed on administrative leave and an independent law violation investigation was initiated by the Brown County Sheriff's Office. The defense counsel stated that officers at the scene seemed to laugh at the suspect's plight after Knutson began mimicking the suspect's hobbling. As the investigation carried on, in January of 2023, detectives met with Officer Knutson to question him about why he drove on the grass to catch up to Mr. Sanchez instead of simply parking by the sidewalk. In response, Officer Knutson claimed that he thought something else was there, implying that there was apparently another vehicle by the sidewalk. And so, he decided to drive onto the grass instead. Interestingly, Officer Knutson also admitted that mimicking the suspect's walk was stupid and inappropriate. As the investigations went on, Chief Chris Davis of the Green Bay Police Department commented on the matter, stating that, We take all allegations of misconduct by Green Bay police officers seriously, and I am committed to handling them in a way that is objective, thorough, and fair to all involved. Then, on April 19, 2023, Officer Knutson formally proceeded to Brown County Court where he was charged with misconduct in office through fraudulent record or statement, a felony that carries up to three and a half years in prison if convicted. 
He is also charged with a misdemeanor, negligent operation of a vehicle, which carries not more than nine months. At the time of this recording, Officer Knutson is scheduled to appear in court on May 17, 2023. Be sure to check out our previous video where we cover another outrageous police encounter.